Kaya, I think, according to my, my records, if we pulled this off correctly, you founded your first company in 1983? 82. 82, Trantex. Yeah. Went from a one-person business to over 250 employees with sales of over 10 million. She spent some time in Germany, the US. She's got numerous board memberships, an author, uh, and importantly for the Alto people, she's well known in the Alto Entrepreneurship Society as a coach in the Startup Sauna program. So it's a great pleasure to welcome back an old and dear friend, Kaya, Kaya Pristi, welcome. Thank you. When I became an entrepreneur, the atmosphere was that there were two possible conclusions, death or bankruptcy. You became an entrepreneur and it was a one-way street. Now it isn't. You become an entrepreneur. You, you can become a serial entrepreneur. You start up your company and then you go and work for a bigger company or you have a company and you work for a bigger company at the same time and you can do many things at the same time and I absolutely love it because now we are no longer put in this one box. You are, you have a uh, Master of Sciences from Technology. You work in this kind of a big corporation and that's it. You have worked your the per first 10 years in, say, IT industry. You will stay in the IT industry. Actually, we have realized that we can change. And that's marvelous because life is way too short and too valuable to be boxed in. Don't ever let anybody do it for you. There are seven random thoughts when I was saying, I wish I had known when I started. These are partly them and partly like over these 30 plus years, I've really learned to appreciate this. And the first is the importance of team. Chemistries need to work, at least in the beginning. And if they don't, don't go into it. Things change over life. You may start a company with people, and then things change, and you realize you don't work well together. And also, when the company grows, you need new kinds of people. And one of the sad things that I still see is that people form a company, and then they're like, I'm the CEO, and I need to be the CEO, and then the company grows, hopefully, and, and when it starts growing, you realize that you need new kind of talent, and you have to let go, and you have to say that, okay, we need a new CEO, and I think we are getting better at this, but it still is there, because becoming an entrepreneur, to me, is still that it's about the company, you the importance of shareholders' agreement when you start a company. And this is one, if you remember one piece of advice, if you become an entrepreneur and you start with others, the team is important and do a shareholders' agreement with them from the very beginning. Because things change in life. And if you agree in the beginning, in a simple way, I'm not talking about a 30-page agreement where you try to define absolutely every possible thing that happens. I'm a mathematician, I love algorithms. So a basic algorithm, okay, we start working together. If you leave, what will happen? And I strongly suggest that you put in a clause where if somebody leaves, they have to offer back their shares, or at least part of the shares, because I have been cleaning, now sitting in boards and cleaning up companies with no shareholder agreements, with incredible amount of passive shareholders, and in worst case, even antagonistic shareholders. And I do think that, yes, it's important to think of funding. It's very good that we have public funding, and it's good to do the funding pitches and so on, and yes, there are many cases where you really need investor money, but always think of who is going to be your paying customer. I, as a tiny angel investor, I do small angel investments, but that is what I look at always. And I, I don't even pretend to be, you know, I, I'm unable to see the opportunities where the company says, oh, we are not going to make money, but we are going to make an exit. I can understand that it's there, but I still have problems to uh, understand. Focus does not mean that you sit and plan for one year and because you know best. The focus is that you think of your idea, you believe in it, and then you think, you know, what can I offer to the customers? And if you think of 10 features that you could offer, you throw eight away, and then you focus on the two, and you choose which one you execute. Because if you are a team of three, or even five, you will most likely not be able to execute the 10 features properly. 
focus on the one that is the most important to your customer. Execute that, make sure that that works. And also, by the way, customers want simpler solutions than you think. Uh, there's never enough time. This is life in startups. So yeah, it's a, it's a great experiment in learning how to prioritize and how to try to manage your life so that all the hours actually are there to do the stuff. Luck has to do with things. I mean, a couple of, in Trantex time, a couple of the biggest deals I did was that I happened to sit in a plane beside a person. And me, being a quiet and shy person, you know, started talking with that person, and you know, we started chatting and things led to one another. Was that luck? Yes. Was that the fact that you give luck a chance? Yes, just as much. So either you sit there and write your own business plan and never talk to anybody who's sitting beside you, or you chat and see, oh, okay, maybe you still write, you still have time to write part of your business plan, but you talk to people because, after all, business is something done by people, between people, still. No matter how much we live in the internet, no matter how much we say, oh, we do things electronically, we are still people. 